Sometimes it just happens. You sit down, you craft the best course you can, you get all your resources, set everything up, place the times, the learners pick what classes they wanna go to, you sit down, teach the classes, they love it, they're asking questions, you're giving feedback, the class ends, and the next day, you see on your profile, a two-star rating. Yikes. Hey you guys, and welcome back to my channel. If this is the first time seeing my face, please make sure it is not the last by clicking that little red subscription button and the bell down below to be updated for each and every future video. Whether you teach on OutSchool, VIP Kid, Palfish, Say ABC, whatever it is, chances are if you can receive parent feedback, you may have received feedback that wasn't the best or ideal, so to speak. Since starting the venture into online teaching, I have noticed a lot of panic posts on Facebook, Reddit, Instagram, wherever you can post and have communities and discuss your experiences on any platform. A lot of teachers go into panic modes. Are people gonna stop booking my classes? Is it going, is it going to ruin my career? What do I do? How do I overcome this low rating? Is it gonna lead to more low ratings? Is this really going to impact my online teaching career. So that's what I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I know I shine a lot of accolades and positive parts of online teaching in my experience, so I wanted to turn the tables today and talk to you guys about what happens when you do get poor parent feedback. And I'm not saying like they were poor because they left it. They could leave it for any reason, for whatever reason they were dissatisfied in the product. That's what I wanna talk about today because I wanna show you guys the good and the not good sides of online teaching. And just like every OutSchool video, this one is brought to you by my new and improved OutSchool course creation guide. Whether you're a new or veteran teacher on the OutSchool platform, this guide helps you craft the perfect class for you and the passions you wanna share on the OutSchool platform. Information for the link to sign up for my mailing list to receive this guide is down below in the description box. Also down below by your guys' request is everything I use in both my brick and mortar classroom and my online cl teaching classroom. Everything down there is not sponsored in any way, it's just loved and used by me each and every day. If you want to know what camera I'm using, the ring lights, what I take when I travel, the props I use, it is all listed down below in the description box. And for those of you guys who are asking where I'm getting all of my graphic design coursework, I'm actually getting it for free on a website called Skillshare. They were kind enough to sponsor a video a few weeks back and my discount code is still valid. Down below in the description box, you can receive two free months of Skillshare. If you don't know what it is, it's basically out school for adults and they have a plethora of different classes, anything from photography, run your business, productivity. For me, I was using it for productivity, budgeting out self businesses, and graphic design. It has helped me so much. It is free to use information and the link is down below as well. But let's get into this. A two star review. Now I'm looking at my out school parent reviews right now and my first, I will say, I'm not going to count. I'm going to say my first 20 to 25 were all five star. My daughter loves this class. Kristen was great. She let my son feel comfortable to come out of a shell. I will say, if you're somebody who struggles with anxiety and the feeling to always need to impress people, I highly recommend turning off your out school notifications for reviews. The first time I got this review, like the first time I saw it was in an email, 10 minutes before I was going to go teach another section of that class. Now, this review was from a one-time class, so I didn't, I didn't have to worry about seeing that child or that learner again because that learner came to a one-time class. But I will say, it is a knock to your gut, at least for me it was. Somebody who's had years of classroom teaching experience, two and a half years of online teaching experience, teaching a class where the subject matter is what I have a master's degree in. This isn't me saying she's wrong. That That is not the case here. This is honestly their opinion. And my opinion, this just goes to say it doesn't matter how much experience you have, that first low rating, it's, it's okay to feel like it really does hit you in the gut. I feel like over time I'm able to take criticism and constructive feedback a lot better. But what made this one hurt, A, it was my first rating that wasn't a five star, it wasn't a four, it wasn't a three, it was a two. I saw that rating and I got really upset thinking, oh my gosh, what's wrong? I clicked over to my email. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna see her feedback. I'm gonna get her to change it. Didn't end up that way, but let's go on. I opened my email, saw the two stars, and then I clicked to see feedback, which would be publicly posted on my OutSchool profile. If you're not an OutSchool teacher, what's different from other platforms, at least in my experience, the reviews 
are public domain. If a parent wants to leave you a terrible, terrible review, they can either make it be private where only you can see it, or public where everyone can see it and you cannot take it down. I did get a few private reviews from parents in other classes. They gave me five stars. They would let me know, Kristen, like the audio when you showed that clip was too loud or the mic was having issues on these things and my husband and I were able to fix that. He works in IT so he's very helpful when it comes to Zoom and sound and screen sharing and audio sharing. He is a godsend. Thank you, Christopher, for putting up with me. He's sleeping right now. Thank you. But anyway, just so you know, if you are a prospective out school teacher or you're someone wanting to learn more about the platform, your reviews are not private. So think of it like Yelp. People can write anything on here. And for the most part, they are very kind. Uh, they'll say things, thank you for your expertise. My daughter's had an interest in piano composition and theory. And this really helped her since she will not not be having music classes this fall. Thank you so much, Kristen. My son enjoyed this class. Sometimes they don't even leave reviews. And in the case of my two star, that was exactly what happened. It was a two star review for a one time meeting class. I clicked the parent review. I saw no public review. So nothing here on my public page. So I clicked over to see if she had left anything on my private review. Nothing. Crickets. Nada. Now, that's good because I did not see anything in writing that was going onto my public page. Her two stars did go into a full effect on my total five star rating. So now I'm like at four and a half, 4.6, I really don't know. But I thought, okay, if she didn't leave me public feedback, I wonder if she left me private and she didn't. So me thinking I'm gonna change her mind, got on my high horse after class and wrote to this parent. Now, if there's anything working in hospitality, hotel management, well, as hotel-like as working on a cruise ship is where you have to live with your clients. Usually in a hotel hospitality business, you work with the clients, they go on their vacation, you go home. We live with them. But the good thing I learned through working for Carnival Cruise Lines was like grade A management, customer service, hospitality, all of those things, because again, you are living with these people. So I wrote this woman a very nice note thanking her for her feedback and wanting to inquire what I could do in the future to make the course better. I didn't write, what's wrong with you? Why would you do that to me? I can't believe it. It was honestly, thank you for attending this class. Uh, if you could please let me know, I'd be happy to answer any questions. If there's anything I missed in this course, you know, I, I at least reached out in a nice, respectful way. Nowhere in this message did I ask her to reconsider her rating, change anything. It was honestly just, how can I fix your experience? Was there something that I didn't do? And this is the part that makes me laugh a little bit, and I did not reply to this. She wrote, Thank you so much, Teacher Kristen. My child loved your class. Hoping to book another one with you soon. Thanks again for a great time. <laughs> so that's that. I did not write this parent back. I didn't ask why she gave two stars and then a nice, kind comment. I figured maybe there was an underlying issue and she didn't want to talk about it. So maybe something happened on there and they didn't want to talk about it. Or maybe they just hated the class. They're allowed to. I can't please everyone. You learn that in music school. You clearly cannot please everyone. But that was that. That was my two-star review. And I will not lie to you. I internally panicked. I was going, I don't know what's going to happen. Do parents really listen to each other with feedback and ratings? Are they going to see that two-star in that specific class? Because when you go to that specific class, you can see ratings just on that class. On my profile, you can see ratings for every single class I've taught in an average. So I waited a few weeks to make this video. I've kept an eye on that specific class. I taught that class today and it was fully booked. I taught that class. I'm pulling it up. I've been teaching a lot because I'm going on vacation and I really didn't want to teach while on vacation. I'm teaching it tomorrow with six learners. At the time of me filming this, I've got two days till vacation, so it's okay. On average, I offer this class for between two learners and 12 learners. I taught it at max capacity twice this week, tomorrow with six learners, and I believe I teach it again on Friday. Today's a Wednesday. Tomorrow with six on Thursday, and Friday with right now four, so hopefully it'll get more. So in essence, if I've learned anything, it is 
one or two bad reviews are not going to hurt you so long as you are still open-minded and willing to learn take criticism and if neither of those work for you when someone gives you feedback you just say the two words we learned in graduate school ready thank you hey Kristen I really liked your performance in that musical I thought you did a really great job I can tell you put a lot of work and time and energy into perfecting that role but it just really wasn't for you like I wasn't feeling it did you think you could sing those notes it just wasn't good for you you know <gasps> Thank you. Okay, you don't have to be that dramatic. That was just for me. That's my internal monologue that happens when I read comments, whether it be on OutSchool or YouTube. Sometimes I just write, thank you, and I move on. And honestly, it's something I've had to work with and get better with over time, but there you guys have it. I have gotten a two-star review. I've gotten a few threes, a couple fours, and honestly, it has not killed the rate in which I get learners in my classes and I hope that helps I hope you find that comforting I am not an exception to the norm I'm just an average teacher I learn just like you do a lot of trial and error but I try to be open-minded I try to think what is in the best interest of the student if a parent didn't give me a five star I do ask them what could have been better and a lot of times parents really like that. I've had parents give me a four star review, give me feedback and then rebook a totally different class. I don't know if it's because they like that subject matter better or they liked me, I don't really know. But it's not for me to know. I'm just the one giving out my services and they're the customer, they are the client. They are the ones who are coming to me to learn something and it is my job and responsibility to deliver on the classes that I offer these learners. Anyway, if you've made it this long into the video, I wanna ask for your input. I am debating making a few videos at the end of this month and I wanna know which of these following topics do you like more? I'm gonna read you guys some video ideas and I want you to tell me down below or you can message me on Instagram which ones you like the most. Since I've gotten a lot of messages about joining an MLM, which is weird in itself, I thought about making a video outlining 10 jobs you can do from home that are not MLMs. No offense if you are in an MLM, that's, that's fine but I've gotten a lot of really aggressive people messaging me. I also wanna know if you guys wanna start seeing videos talking about running a YouTube channel, how much I make on YouTube, different opportunities that have come to me because of this channel and my other channel. I also wanna know if you guys would be interested in knowing how much money I make in a week in general from all of my different streams. I've seen a lot of people make videos on how much I spend in a week and I wanna turn it on its head and do how much I earn in a week. But I wanna know your opinions. What things do you like? What do you think would be interesting? Let me know down below in the comments. But that is it for this video. If you liked it, of course, give it a huge thumbs up. It really helps out my channel. If you have not done so yet, please consider clicking that subscribe button. We are getting so close to the 10,000 subscriber milestone on this channel. Until next time, take care of yourselves and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.